Severe weather season 2025 is quickly approaching, and that means it is time for us here at Michigan Storm Chasers to get ready, get prepared, but also take a deep dive into what's ahead and what could be ahead for us here in Michigan. A lot of you guys have also asked questions about how active or inactive is it going to be, as well as what we expect for tornado count. This video is going to answer all those questions. But first, I want to explain how I got to the conclusion that I did by going through about 20 or so slides that explain each part of the atmosphere we look for for severe weather. So I'm going to take you all back to last year, 2024. I'm going to take you back to last year because it explains very well what I'm trying to get across in today's video. One thing that we based our forecast last year off of was the Enzo pattern. The Enzo stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation, a fancy term that communicates water temperatures in the Pacific Ocean by the equator. Okay. When those water, when those temperatures, water temperatures in the equator area are warm, it is known and deemed El, El Nino. When they are cold, it is deemed La Nina. When they are neither warm or cold, it is deemed neutral. Why that matters is we go take a look back at last year's winter into the spring. We were very, very strong El Nino, which led to a very dry and warm winter. You guys remember last winter was pretty, pretty bad here. That is because El Nino was in effect, very warm, very dry. But as we moved towards spring of last year, that started to shift and fell rapidly, cooled rapidly to a La Nina phase. That rapid change, when we see those rapid changes overall, that usually leads to above average severe weather in the US. Last year was no exception with a largely above average season for the Great Lakes region, including many states breaking their annual tornadic records last year. So a very simple forecast last year. This year is gonna be a lot different though. The reason why on your screen currently is the forecast for Enzo. The El Nino will be on top, the La Nina on the bottom. In the middle there between those uh, dotted line, or the, uh, the black line with two dots, that's your neutral phase. The forecast between now on the right side of your screen and October on the left side, or sorry, now on the left side of your screen, October on the right side of your screen, all those lines are each model's forecast, and they stay pretty much centered in the neutral phase, if not leaning just below into a weak La Nina. So a very stable Enzo phase is expected over the next several months, storm season included. So making this forecast, I saw this and I said, huh, no major shifts, no major changes. We're going to be neutral. I'm probably not going to get much in the way of a forecast out of Enzo because of the stability in the Enzo phase or the forecast, should I say. But to test this theory, I wanted to be sure. Going back 70 years in the Enzo cycle, we're going to find similar years to the current pattern. We'll, we'll keep a close eye on. On the top of your screen there in the red colors would be the El Nino. On the bottom would be the La Nina. In the middle would be neutral. Going back into 70 years of time, I found four years that match this upcoming pattern pretty closely. 60, 67, 84, and 2017. These four years match our current pattern quite well. And I wanted to go back and take a peek at how those years played out to see if there was any consistent signal for above or below average severe weather. Starting in 1960, our average is roughly 13 to 16 tornadoes in Michigan. We only had six in 1960. Indiana and Ohio well below average as well with 13 and seven. They usually average around 20, 25 a year. So well below average for 1960. 67 was above average. 19 tornadoes in Michigan, 31 in Indiana, but only six in Ohio. 1984, above average for Michigan, but below average for Indiana and Ohio. And last but not least, 2017, Ohio, Indiana, all above average, 41 in Ohio, 29 in Indiana, but only nine tornadoes in Michigan. So taking it all together here, going back to the Enzo chart, the assumption that the upcoming year of forecasting based on the Enzo is not going to be a very reliable. I would say it's verified. Going through all these years, I figured uh, there's a lot of fluctuation. There's no very strong signal either way. It kind of fluctuates between above and below average, depending on 
what state you're in. So there's no very strong signal for either way uh, with the Enzo cycle. So the question that I then ask myself is, well, if the Enzo is not going to play a huge role this year, what will? I'm going to start with the easiest one here to explain, and that's going to be the NPO. The NPO, much like the Enzo, the Enzo is by the equator. The NPO stands for Northern Pacific Oscillation. So go north in the Pacific Ocean, you get to the area of the NPO. And as we see on the screen, I circled it. It is quite warm there. The yellow is orange and red colors indicating warmer water temperatures. That is an area to keep a close eye on. As long as the NPO stays warm or in a positive phase, should I say, that usually historically leads to above average severe weather because it amplifies our jet stream across the U.S. So as long as we stay warm with our NPO, I would expect activity to continue as it has in the past couple of weeks and months here in the wintertime. Now, that is a very simple way to put it. We can get in the forecast there and say, all right, above average season, not, 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 not quite. All right. This is where things may get dicey for you guys for new terminology. MJO, Madden Julian Oscillation. Going back to the MPO chart here, the MPO and also the Enzo are areas in the Pacific Ocean that do not move. They are always going to be in that one particular area where we watch for the temperatures and we can base a forecast off that. Whereas the MJO is not stationary. MNPO, Enzo, stationary. MJO, not stationary. The MJO goes through eight phases as it travels across the world. Each phase means something different for us here in the U.S. This graph, on, there's actually two graphs on your screen that can be uh, separated on the left side for temperature, on the right side for precipitation. Each phase of the MJO, we see a different meaning for us here in the U.S., but Michigan specifically. So, for example, temperature graph on the left side of your screen in phase one, top left of your screen, would mean Michigan would be cooler than average. Blue temperatures mean cooler. Yellowish orange is warmer than average. On the right side of your screen in phase one, we see Michigan in a brownish red color. That means drier than normal conditions, and the, obviously the green would be above average. So phase one would be cooler and drier. Phase two, we see cooler temperatures there and also a water pattern. So cooler and water. Make sense here? MJO cycles and phases go through about 30 to 60 days. So it's a pretty rapidly changing, uh, uh, excuse me, thing to watch here in comparison to the MPO and ENZO forecast, which are usually a cycle of about two or three years. MJO takes about 30 to 60 days. So why this matters? I think this year will be heavily dependent on the MJO phase. I think that our active patterns and stretches will come in waves. I don't see anything uh, that suggests above average or below average based on either one of these. But I will say the MJO is going to determine how active, how wet, how warm we're going to be here. And I think that's going to be our main driving factor this year for our severe weather, but also our temperature patterns as well. So that is something to keep a close eye on here. So takeaway from the MJO and the NPO is active will probably be the main case through the first part of the month here or the first part of the spring. But the MJO will probably take over a little bit later in the spring, in the summer. And I think we'll be a little bit more at the mercy of MJO in the phase it is in to determine our severe weather and precipitation is also temperature outcomes. So that is what I'm seeing with this overall forecast. So putting it all together and jamming in our thoughts as well, let's go ahead and talk about conclusions here. This storm season will be reliant on numerous factors. So like I said in the first part of the video, last year we had one main driving factor in the Enzo being an El Nino changing rapidly to La Nina. That drove last year's activity this year. We don't have that. We're going to have the MJO. I can talk about the NPO. There's other things I can talk about as well that I'm not going to talk about in today's video, like the NAO, the AO. Very, very uh, important teleconnections across the globe that do uh, affect our weather here. But the main two things I want to point attention to is what I covered, the NPO, MJO. Overall takeaway, numerous things coming together to support severe weather and also perhaps a less active pattern. There is no signal, significant signal either way for activity or a less active year. It seems pretty much on par with average. However, we're going to deem this year as a wild card year. Wild card year because 
I tell people this all the time. It only takes one event to make or break a severe weather season. And I'll correlate that well to two past two years, May 7th of 24 and August 24th of 2023. We had four separate tornadoes on May 7th of last year. We had seven tornadoes in 2023 there on that one day alone. So it takes one year to make or break a severe weather season. With all that being said, I have put together our initial thoughts. We are going with an average season. We're predicting Michigan will have 10 to 15 tornadoes in 2025. That is only because, again, we do not see a significant signal either way for above or below average severe weather. I do see spurts of severe weather based on the MJO cycle, going back to this graph here, and also going to the MPO. I think we're going to start active in spring when we're going to start seeing a little bit of a less active last half of our season as well. So putting it all together, an average severe weather season with 10 to 15 tornadoes is what we're going with here. Overall expectations as well in the shorter term will be a warmer start to the month of March. We're going to cool down between the first half and the mid-March, and then the last half of March should warm back up. I think by the time we get to April, we're going to start seeing severe weather chances increase here. I'll go ahead and end on this note as well. We have some maps here that do communicate tornado risk, historically speaking, by the uh, chant or by the uh, by the month here. So in the month of February, we don't typically have a risk for tornadoes, historically speaking. We had two last year. I think before those two, we only had one on record, I believe. So only three historical tornadoes on record between 1950 and the current date. So not very many. Not a big concern for the for the month of February here. Going to March, though, March really starts to kind of ramp up across Michigan. And that could be uh, – I don't know if that's going to be the case for this March. I think it's going to be a little bit too cool for tornadoes. But again, the last half could smell different than what I'm thinking now. But overall, the risk starts to increase in March. By the time we get to April – that changes and begins to become a greater risk, especially further south toward the Indiana Ohio borders. May is when it really starts ramping up for the entire state, and we peak in the month of June and also continuing into July as well as August before we trend down for September. And by the time October rolls around, we are looking at usually exiting our severe weather season. So the main months to watch here, May, June, July, August, still, I do think those months this year are going to be the most active, especially June. But overall speaking, I think it's going to come in waves. All in all, should be right around average or so, 10 to 15 tornadoes this year in the state of Michigan. But like I said before, it takes one event to make or break a season. If we don't get one big event, we could end up below average. If we do get the big event, we could end up below or above average, should I say. So Hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, I know there's probably a lot of questions and comments, so feel free to ask questions in the comments below. I know a lot of technical terms here I use, so if you guys don't understand something or have even deeper questions, feel free to hit me up in the chat below. I will respond accordingly. With that being said, that is our Severe Weather Season 2025 video. Hope you guys enjoy. Overall, it should be a fun year, an active year. And we are here for it all. We're 24-7, 365 live coverage of radar and chasers in the field for all tornado and severe warnings in the state of Michigan. We'll continue this year on YouTube, Facebook, X, Instagram, and now Twitch. With that being said, you guys stay safe. Hit the like button for me on the way out. I'll see you guys on tomorrow's video here at Michigan Storm Chasers YouTube channel.